All right, class, last part of this electro camp. I want to talk about concentration cell. I'm going to practice problem, which is great. That's what you need. So concentration cell, what are they? Look at this voltaic cell for me. Isn't that interesting? So the oxidation and the reduction is exactly the same metal. How does that work? Both half cells have the same component. So what is the driving force to transfer the electron from anode to cathode? If everything is exactly the same, what is the driving force? The driving force is what is difference between this? What do you think? So if you look at the one on the left side, so my oxidation is silver going to silver plus, and on the right side, my reduction is silver plus going to silver. So what is the driving force? The driving force is that they have different concentration. That's the driving force. They have different concentration. So here we have a lower concentration and then here we have a higher concentration. So what happens is electrons, they travel from the dilute, the, the part that is diluted to the part that is more concentrated. So the electrons travel from the diluted part to the more concentrated part. And that is the driving force for this. Now, let's go over it a little bit more. So over here, the concentration is 0 0.10, and here is 1.10. I don't know if you just memorize it, I want you to really understand it. Here's why. You see how this does oxidation? When you do oxidation, that means the silver metal is going to turn into silver plus, right? So what that means is when this does oxidation, some of the metal are going to jump into the solution as they become positively charged, right? And they, they got oxidized and they become plus from zero goes to plus. So they're going to jump into the solution as they get oxidized. So as they're jumping into the solution, what happened to the concentration is going to go higher up. So it jumps into the solution, the silver metal becomes silver plus, is going to lose electron. And then the electron are going to travel here, the electrons are going to come here, and then here the silver plus is going to turn into silver metal. And now remember, this concentration was high, so now the silver plus is going to turn into silver metal, so it's going to jump on this electrode so the concentration is going to go down you see that this concentration is going to keep going high this concentration is going to keep coming down until they balance out until they reach equilibrium because remember the here what we're going to have we're going to lose an electron and here this one gets an electron so let me explain it one more time what's the driving force is the difference in concentration low concentration goes to high concentration. The low concentration, as it gets oxidized, more are going to jump into solution and become silver plus. So this concentration goes up, loses electron, it's gonna go over here. The electron are going to reduce the silver plus into silver metal. So it jumps onto the electrode as a deposit, as it becomes a metal. So this concentration is gonna go down. So this is a driving force to make the concentration to eventually reach equilibrium. This is gonna keep going up, this is gonna keep going down until you reach the equilibrium. So this is concentration cell. And what's the application? A lot of people are biology major and complaining about taking chemistry, right? So biology, in biology you have cell membrane potential. There's an E cell across the cell membrane. And that's exactly the same idea over here. That's exactly the same thing that is going on in our cell. There's a cell potential. In a cell membrane potential, this is what's going on in our cell. There's a concentration difference and how things move around. Now, if you, and I wanted to show you something cool. If you remember the nurse equation, minus 0.0592n log of q, right? Now this component is gonna go away and it's gonna go away because this will just be the same, just a different sign, so it ends up being zero. So this ends up being zero 
because these two are exactly the same. One is plus, one is minus. So you're just gonna cancel each other out. So that component is going to go away. And then, so let's figure out the E cell potential for this. So then the E cell would equal 0 0.0592. In this case, the number of electron transfer was one log. And for product over reactant, you always put the diluted one over the more concentrated one. So it would be 0 0.10 over 1.0. So it's always gonna be the diluted concentration over the more concentrated concentration to figure out the E cell potential. Again, your biology classes, think about the cell membrane potential. This is what they are talking about. All right, so nice job. Let's do a practice problems now. Here is our first practice problem. What I'm asking you to do here, I'm asking you to calculate the E cell potential at a standard condition and the delta G at the standard condition. Okay, you guys completely got this. You have your SRP in front of you, hopefully. So to calculate the E cell, you have to figure out what's been oxidized and what's been reduced. My zinc is going from zero to plus two, so it's going to be oxidized. And here is going from plus to zero, is going to be reduced, okay? So what I want you guys to do, I want you to look at your SRP. If you look at for SRP, so the zinc has been oxidized, okay? What is the SRP for that? I'm gonna give you a minute to go and find your SRP. Here is my SRP. I can use the, the shorter version. This is not really complicated. You guys got this. So zinc has been oxidized. What is my zinc? Zinc is over here, but this is reduction. So I need to flip the sign. So for zinc, it would be plus seven, six. And what's the other one? The other one is zero. Yeah. H plus going to H2, that is zero. That is what everything is being measured against. So if I do that, my E cell is 0.76. What does that mean? That means the reaction will go. That means this is a spontaneous reaction. And again, this was a standard, so it was at one molar, so I can just use a table easily. Now to do the delta G, you know how to do the delta G, right? The delta G is minus N F E cell, okay? Now what is the N? The N is two electrons being transferred. What is my F? That's a Faraday constant. And then what is my E cell value is 0.76. So if I plug everything in, what do I end up getting? I end up getting negative 1466567 joules of energy. Now what does that mean? Yeah, the delta G is negative. That means the reaction is also spontaneous. Remember that. So if the E cell is positive and delta G is negative, what do we have? We have a spontaneous reaction. We have a spontaneous reaction. So they match up, which is beautiful. Okay, here's the next problem, big problem. When you look at this, I'm asking you to figure out the E for the following. When you look at that, the first thing that's gonna stand out to you is that this is not standard, right? Which is over here, not standard. They're not one molar. Because it's not a standard, I have to use Nernst equation, right? Because it's not a standard, okay? This is a um, cell potential. I know my oxidation is on my left side and I know my reduction is on my right side, okay? Now, hopefully you have the big SRP, the longer one, to figure this out together. Now the oxidation part is usually a little bit easier. What's been oxidized here? What do you have? You have V plus two going to V plus three. That's what's been oxidized. Do you agree? That is my oxidation. And I want you to look at the table and tell me what is that number? I want you to look at that table and tell me what is that number for oxidation. If you look at it, for the reduction is minus 0.26. So for the oxidation, flip the sign, it will be plus 26 volts. This is the E cell value from the table. Okay, now that is my oxidation, right? That is my oxidation. And you know what? I don't like this. Let me write it down here. So the E cell value 
and it's going to be after I flip the sign 0.26. I'm going to come over here, and when I come over here, I have MN04 minus going to MN plus 2. Okay, that's my reduction. Look at the SRP for me. I want you to really look at it. So what do you get for the, for the cell potential? What you get is 1.51. Okay. Okay, beautiful. This is my oxidation and my reduction. If I add up these two numbers, 0.26 plus 1.51, if it was a standard condition, 1.77 volts would be my E cell value. But we know that is not standard condition. But that would be my E cell value. Okay. But we know it's not a standard condition because we have to use Nernst equation because it's not one molar. So what we have to use, the Nernst equation is E equals E cell minus 0 0.0592 over N log of Q. And don't forget that Q is product over reactant. Do you guys agree? Okay. Now what do we need to do next? The next thing we need to do we have these two, but we need a balanced reaction. So I know this is my oxidation. I know it's my reduction. If this was all standard condition, this would be my E cell value, but they're not standard condition. So I have to use the Nernst equation. When these are not a standard condition, I have to use a Nernst equation. Now I use a Nernst equation, I need to figure out product over reactant for Q. So I need to balance redox reaction. Okay, so let's do that. I have V plus two. Mm. Let me see. I have V plus 2 going to V plus 3, and I have MnO4 minus going to Mn plus 2. Okay, these two, that we are balanced, if there's no oxygen or hydrogen, I just need to balance the charges. On the left hand side, the charge is plus 2, plus 3. So, what do I need to do? I need to add one electron here to balance it out. I'm going to come down here, Mn. 1 and 1, 4 oxygen. I'm going to add 4 H2O here. Now I have 8 hydrogen. I'm going to add 8 H plus here. Now I need to figure out the charges. On this side, I have 8 pluses, 1 minus 2. 8 pluses, 1 minus 1. Sorry, minus 1. 8 pluses and 1 minus 1. What would that be? That would be 7. Okay. On this side, I have 1 plus 2, this is neutral. This is neutral, 1 plus 2. So plus 2, I have to add electron to the more positive side. How many do I need to add? I need to add 5 because then 7 minus 5 would be 2. This is great. So this is great. Now the only thing is I lose $10, you gain $10. Don't forget that. This guy lost 1 electron, this guy gained 5 electrons. That cannot be happening. These two have to be exactly the same. What do I do? I can multiply this by 5. Now the last thing you do, you're going to combine all the product and all the reactant together. Don't forget to multiply this out. And we've done this many times because I got this down. Plus 5 electrons plus 8H plus plus MnO4 minus going to 5V plus 3 plus 5 electrons plus Mn plus 2 plus 4H2. Is there anything we can cancel out? The electrons for sure so we are in a good shape this is our balanced equation so e cell is equal 1.77 minus 0 0.0592 how many electrons are being exchanged five electrons are being exchanged times log of q which is product over reactant what is my product my product is mn plus two to the power of one my product is V plus 3 to the power of 5. What are my reactant? My reactant is V plus 2 to the power of 5. My reactant is H plus to the power of 8. My reactant is MnO4 minus to the power of 1. Okay, now the last thing I need to do here, I gave you guys all of these non standard concentration. So now what you have to do, you have to plug them in, okay? So 1.77 minus 0 0.0592 over 5 log. I'm going to get 0 0.020, 0 
point zero three eight to the power of five point three four point four five to the power of five and my h is one point zero times ten to the minus two to the power of eight. And I forgot to give you the H plus concentration. Um, but the H plus concentration was given in this problem. Sorry about that. The H plus concentration, I have to give it to you, right? Was 1.0 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. Okay. So everything is given to you. If I do it right now, I get 1.86 volt. Sorry about not giving you the H plus. Once I got here, I was like, huh, how did I get that? Sounds good. We've done a lot of problems like this. Hopefully, you feel really, really confident with this. Really nice job. Keep doing practice problem. And I will talk to you guys next time for next next chapter.